Hello everyone. So I'm about to start our parallel session. Welcome and thank you for your interest for in our panel. We'll be talking about independent living and inclusion. We will have great models from low mid uh, income countries. I have great speakers with me. Before I present them to you, I would like to briefly present myself and my organization. And also in relation to the topic, I would like to share our example from Turkey as well. So my name is Nevgül Bisa Safkan. I'm the general manager of Sabancı Foundation from Turkey. We are one of the two biggest family foundations in Turkey. Since 45 years, we're working for the social development in Turkey. Education, social change, arts and culture are our main areas in focus. Our target groups include people with disabilities, youth and women. In relation uh, to, to the topic, I would like to share <clears throat> uh, our example with you from Turkey. We have a grant program. With the grant program, we are, we are granting to projects from all over Turkey. And so far, 43 projects we have completed in the last 10 years and reached more than 30,000 people. The last project in relation to our topic was with the Down Syndrome Association in Turkey. In terms of independent living, there are two key factors. One is the self-advocacy, and the other is the economic participation. A group of young people with Down syndrome uh, were trained in our program. They got trainings in relation to communication, self-care, budgeting, all kinds of things which helped them in developing their self-confidence. After reaching the self-confidence, they became self-advocates. They went to Turkish parliament and they managed that a research commission is established which will be dealing with the Down syndrome uh, disabilities, their issues and their problems. This was a great success actually and we were gr great to be part of it with the grants that we have provided to them. The second aspect which helped independent living was about the job coaching. Those young people got their jobs with the help of the job coaches, actually the transition became much easier. The orientation process, the adoption to the company, to the job itself, the job coaches were great enablers for them. And more than 50 young Down, Down syndrome uh, young people were able to have their jobs and they were great examples for the others. When talking to independent living and inclusion, I'm sure you will agree that technology is a great aspect and very, very important part. Last year in Turkey, we have organized a seminar with the topic technology for lives without barriers. This was an inspiration from Zero Project, so we invited lots of speakers from international uh, groups and they joined us and shared their experiences. So uh, now I would like to really start, I think we are warming up and now it's getting uh, excited, so I will be starting presenting my speakers to you. So I have great speakers from Egypt, Lebanon, Honduras, Cambodia. The first runner will be May and Ala from Al Hassan Foundation from Egypt. Their special concentration is on wheelchair users. Not only their board, but also their organization is 50% more than with wheelchair users. And so they have so great services from customized wheelchairs up to personal assistance, up to sports and uh, dance collaborations. So we will be listening to them, Ala and May. Okay. Uh, 
Hello, everyone. Uh, allow me to stand up. I just can't. I just can't talk while uh, while sitting. Okay. Uh, the presentation. Uh, okay. Next slide, please. Next. Uh, it's not working? Yes. Chris, can I help you, maybe? Yeah, please. Okay. okay. Does anybody connect to this picture? This picture was in Russia in the World Cup last year. This young man was carried by every person during the World Cup because he was not able to see the, the football matches, okay? This gentleman is my son. This was 2017. Let's come to today, 2019. We are here in Zero Project, representing Al Hassan Foundation, representing Egypt, and being awarded and recognized. This is 2019. I'll go back seven years, and I'll tell you that my son had an accident, a car accident, and he became a wheelchair user. And since that day, we dedicated our lives and our family and, and all our efforts to make people in Egypt live a decent life while being on a wheelchair. So during this journey, we went through a lot. I think that Engineer Ale will be able to present this much better than I do because we have agreed that they say in Japan, nothing about us without us. So Ale, please take the lead. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. May, for the introduction. Um, I don't Thank you, Ms. May, for the introduction. And I would like to start from here. We are serving now about 5,000 wheelchair users in Egypt. And I would like to put you in the situation. What is the situation of PWDs in Egypt? First, we are facing a lack of social awareness, lack of rehabilitation services, and lack of accessibility. And to elaborate what means of, with lack of accessibility, after my accident, and I, when I, took, I took the decision to continue my life and go back to the faculty, I used to be carried up for the third and fifth floor every day for five years, just to attend my lecture in the faculty. This is the situation in Egypt. And also, we are facing a lack of employment. Also, after my graduation from Faculty of Engineering, I tried to get a job, and I did about 30 interviews, and every time I had been rejected. For what? Because I am in a wheelchair, nothing more. And with this situation, this will be the logic result. Low level of physical independence, low level of financial independence, which will definitely lead to a level of people with disability who are living independently, okay? Now we figured out that to face all of these challenges, we have our independent living wheel. We figured out that we have to push for the physical independence for wheelers, which will lead to the financial independence in, accordant to, in accordance to achieve the independent living of them. What are we doing for pushing the, the physical independence living? We have programs for rehabilitation, and what we mean with rehabilitation, that occupational therapy, not physiotherapy, because for wheelchair users who are not in need for physiotherapy, and we are doing peer counseling, peer counseling session for wheelers to get them from this dark area of, no, I cannot, I will stay at home, to this area, yes, I can. I will continue my life. And we have a second program for wheel, custom-made wheelchair, and I, I want to make it more elaborated here. We started five years ago, no one is providing custom-made wheelchair, and we used to get it from England, but we stopped all of this, and we did a collaboration with a Germany, German company, and we sent people to Germany for training, and now we are doing all in Egypt. We are taking the measurements, sending the information to Germany, they do the manufacturing, and sending us the wheelchair, and we are delivering and making delivery and maintenance in Egypt. And we are doing lobbying with private and public sector for accessible transportation, and we have amazing program for sports. 
We started it two years ago as entertainment, but suddenly we found that a lot of energy is, is there, and now we participated with our members in about 15 local championships, and we won 125 medals. And for the financial, we are doing for employment, we are establishing SMEs, and we have a program for arts, and of course we are working for social inclusion. We are doing a lot to change the Egyptian mentality towards people with disability, that those people are here, those people are exist, and those people have rights and duties. And also changing the mentality of wheelers themselves is that you are differently abled. We are not, we are differently abled. We can do everything able people do, but with different way. We moved with this, concepts and we can uh, uh, create this impact and during the five past year we were able to rehabilitate about 3,000 wheelers we delivered about 800 custom mid wheelchair and we did well in equipped ride and we established 300 uh, I small sorry SMEs. excuse me I want to interrupt for a second I want to add to this something very important all those projects were done by employees on a wheelchair we are a DPO, we are a disability people organization. So all those projects have been transmitted to others by wheelchair users to wheelchair users. Yes. So and now uh, uh, 500 of our members are participating in our sports and arts program and we have served 500 kids on a wheelchair. And we are investing in people because we believe that investment in people is the more the most important investment. We, all of these services cost us about 30 million Egyptian pounds. Okay? We believe now that our success factors, which is different to other foundations in Egypt, that we have a database criteria, eligibility criteria, process and processes. We are building capacities all the time. We are providing tailored solutions and unique service, and finally we are changing lives. We are changing lives of people. With this, we were able to, we were able to su succeed with physical independence, financial independence, taking in consideration the social awareness, and we are able to achieve the independent living of these wheelers in Egypt. Okay, for the success life stories, and due to a limited time, I, I have to skip all of this, and I will just say one story for Mahmoud Al Ghazar. Please, just a moment. Okay. Mahmoud Al Ghazar, we met him three years ago. Mahmoud Al Ghazar was 125 kilograms and he was applying for a custom made wheelchair. And I said, Mahmoud, you are going to kill yourself. And we did a peer counseling session for him to get him from this. He was, he was living in an, an institute doing nothing. And we did a peer counseling session for him. We got him from this dark area to the area of... Yes, he was 120 kilograms. Yes. He did a lot of system to lose weight, but he couldn't. And finally, he did a surgery in his stomach, and he started losing weight. After that, he joined our program. He got a custom mid wheelchair. Now he's an Egyptian championship, and he's a team leader with contemporary dancing team, the first contemporary dancing team in Egypt. Let me, let me uh, finalize this and tell you something. We do not have commercial or one-size-fits-all uh, uh, solutions. We have, we, we do one-to-one -one interviews for each and every single person and we see what this person does and we see what this person needs and we allocate this wheelchair user to the project necessary for him. So it's not like people come in and they just go into no, it's like a, a journey, and there are so many stages in this journey, and everybody fits in a certain stage. So I hope that I, we concluded time over. I mean, we are champions to do this in 10 minutes. We, we usually take 10 hours. Thank yes. you. Thank I, I just you. want to say about our, please, if you, if you excuse me, our long-term plan, the last one for 10 years, we are dreaming with Al Hassan Services Hub. It's one place that we have a factory for wheelchair, a rehabilitation center, a sports academy for our wheelers. It's one cool style. It's a major, mega project. If a wheelchair user is coming in Egypt, people say you have to go to Al Hassan Foundation.
Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. If you have done so much, of course, 10 minutes is never enough to tell your story, I understand. Yeah, we wanted the 20 awards every hour <laughs> <laughs> that were given yesterday. <laughs> That's right, very, very impressive, thank you. Actually, our panel speaker, Nawaf, couldn't join us. He had a great presentation. He was supposed to uh, join us from Lebanon, so I will skip his turn, and I will go on with Carola Lopez, and from Honduras, from different continent. They are here from long way. Thank you for joining us. We will listen to their program, their services, personal assistant services they will mention that they give to people with disabilities and their families, the guiding, the training, and the legal assistance they will explain all inclusive. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Me. Me llamo Carola. My name is Carola. Soy de Honduras. I am from Honduras. Represento al programa de rehabilitación. Uh -huh. I belong to the program de Cerebral Palsy of Rehabilitation. En Honduras tenemos aproximadamente un como una población de 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 casi los 10 millones millones de personas de los cuales aproximadamente según Según, según los datos de la orca, organización ajá, mundial de la salud, un, estamos entre un 12 a un 14 por ciento de la población padece pa, de algún tipo de de discapacidad correcta well, in Honduras there are nearly uh, 10 million people of, of, of inhabitants and um, uh, the population with people with disability is between 12 percent es así como en el año 1966 cinco padres buscan ayuda y conforman lo que es prepase uh, five uh, group of parents uh, decide to join efforts and they establish what is called today the program Preface. Actualmente, los beneficiarios llegan hasta mil personas entre los programas de RBC que se mantiene in different communities of the country. Today, the, they have a nearly a thousand benefits of the program. In Honduras, the people with disability do not respect our human human rights, despite the fact that we have varios convenios, reglamentos públicos nacionales e internacionales, pero, pero no son respetados. Ajá. In, in Honduras, as any other country, they have um, a lot of problems because uh, uh, the rights of the people with disability they are not respected. Este, 
otro gran problema para la persona con discapacidad viene siendo que los padres o sus familias o sus familias son, son o muy sobre, sobre, sobre protectores o los deja en abandono total. The real challenge is that parents in Honduras, they either overprotect or they abandon uh, people with disabilities. Por eso nace el programa de, programa de protección para la persona con discapacidad y su familia, quien viene siendo un programa y un no, no. Bueno, diferentes prácticas que se, que se hacen para promover lo que es la vida independiente. And that's why the program Profase uh, was born. And it's very no innovative because not only involves the people with disability, but also their families. Mm. Por ejemplo, Como, como estamos cortos, cortos de tiempo sí. para poder correr. Yeah, that's because we are running out of time. We will try to run. <laughs> este, realmente contamos por, por primera vez en Honduras con un, con un proyecto piloto que consta de de 10 jóvenes que están colaborando con cinco personas con discapacidad dando, dando por primera vez asistencia personal sin que sin que exista aún la ley. Okay, there is no law in Honduras yet. However, uh, they're running a pilot of uh, with 10 people with disability and they are, that they are assisted by five people. Yeah. Actualmente pudimos lograr meter en en la reforma de la ley y de la ley el el acompañamiento, la asistencia personal. Uh -huh. Well, the good thing is because of this pilot, the group of uh, organization that Carola represent um, was able to include within the law proposal uh, the concept of companionship, so that so the people with disability can uh, have someone who can help them without giving them giving to them their rights. Mm. Como ya me queda poquito, poquito tiempo. Únicamente con contarles que, por ejemplo, con las prácticas que nosotros te, tenemos dentro de los talleres, uh -huh. consultamos con los padres de familia. Si, por ejemplo, si su hijo desea tomar algún, algún tipo de bebida alcohólica, si se la darían. Ok. The funny thing is that uh, they, they spoke with the parents and she just, Carola just mentioned that when they interviewed the parents, she asked them, what happens if one of your kids uh, asks you to have an, alco an alcoholic drink? Los cuales me quedan viendo como diciendo, no. Wow, they, they look at her saying, no way. Pero después, después, vengo yo y, y pregunto, y si su hijo no tuviera discapacidad, ¿cómo lo, cómo lo pudiera well. detener? Then she asked them again, what happened if your child would not, or, or, or your child or children would not have disability? Would you say the same answer? And obviously the answer changed. 
¿Vamos al financiamiento? ¿Cómo financia el programa? Para cerrar. Este, financiadamente, nos están financiando por, me, por medio por me, yo, de proyectos pequeños, pequeños de propase a través del Ministerio de, de, de Educación Pública y proyectos de la Unión Europea. All these workshops, uh, uh, training programs, that, uh, and also all the discussion that they have with the people with disability and also with the families, they are financed by um, uh, programs like the Japan International Cooperation Agency, the European Community, and um, mainly those, those things. ¿Cuáles son los desafíos? Los desafíos vienen siendo de, que, de cambiar las actitudes tanto, tanto de los padres de familia para que respeten a las personas con, con discapacidad como también a la misma persona con discapacidad ya que al tener al tener este este, con la sobreprotección se les se les quita un poquito lo que es la autonomía mm -hmm. the talent chart obviously um, to have the law but also uh, to be able to work with people with disability and their family because they are overprotected so they want to keep their independence Por, Último que, que quiero, me, quiero decirte que, de que, de que, muchas gracias por haberme, por haberme escuchado. Uh -huh. well, she wants to say thank you very much for listening to her and giving her the opportunity to be here. Thank you very much. We thank you both. Great cooperation, thank you. Now I would like to give the turn to Samit May from Cambodia. He will tell us about PASS. What is PASS? PASS is Personal Assistance Service System. It is the first personal assistance model in Cambodia. So, it's your turn. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for having me here. I'm Samit from Cambodia. I'm a founder and executive director of Phnom Penh Center for Dependent Living. What a beautiful day it is. I can see your face very smile and looking forward to your questions or comment yeah, regarding to my question. I am so happy to be sharing with you about the introductions of personal assistance model and independent living movement in Cambodia with all of you. First of all, would like me to introduce Phnom Penh Center for Dependent Living that we call um, PPCIL. PPCIL is established in 2009. This is the first center for promoting independent living for persons with severe disabilities in Cambodia. And we have been working tirelessly uh, to disseminate the independent living model and increase accessibility and wellness of disability concepts and in order to change the negative stereotype of people with disability. Therefore, including influence the positive change. And our activities is to um, implementing the awareness raising, peer counseling, independent living program, and personal assistance services, advocacy, disability inclusions, and even. Next, 
allow me to share with you about one project that we are getting fund support from Australian AIDS through the Department of Foreign Affairs of Australia and facilitate the fund by UNICEF. Our project is called Inclusive Community for Persons with Severe Disability. Why this project? Based on our research is that the situations of people with disabilities have a limited information uh, to receive the information and adequate uh, welfare services. People with severe disabilities uh, have uh, been like they dependently on their family. Yet, people with disability, with severe disability, they also uh, want to have their own rights and independence to decide everything by themselves. Therefore, PPCIL have to remove the causes, interfering their decisions and daily activity through strengthened disability rights in, to increase the social participation into um, the introduce of personal assistance services system in Cambodia, Cambodia society. All of which that we can definitely lead people with severe disability to gratefully accept who they are and live with dignity. <coughs> Our achievement is that, that we um, have been uh, received so far is that one is the personal assistance services system have been implemented in 15 communes and five districts in Phnom Penh. And 30 people with severe disability receive personal assistance service system and change their mindset. Local decision makers have worked to support persons with severe disability in the commune and um, to include uh, the disability into their development effort. People got empowered and advocate for their rights. And 90 homes within 12 uh, target commune got modified accessibility for persons with severe disability. And for talking about the innovation aspects of ICPD, the decision maker uh, and stakeholder get trained on the importance of disability inclusion, accessibility, and other crossing issues into their development effort, independent living as well as on the identifying and assessing people with disability together with PPCIL. We also invite decision maker and stakeholder to see the way how personal assistance assists people with severe disability as the main activity to negotiate with the government. I'm sorry. Yeah. With the, with the government to support personal assistance service systems and develop pension program. <laughs> The impacts we created is that increase the participation of people with disability in the community. The way that we can, we can take an involvement of local authority and stakeholder on disability, independent living life of people with severe disability, and understands of the community people on disability. And finally, of the impact we created is the acknowledgments of personal assistance service systems in the community. You can see in the picture, this guy before, he lived in home, locked at home, more than a, a decade. And we met him in 2009. And now he becomes our advocacy manager. And he try and, uh, and he learned from us, and we work with us to love himself again. So now we work together to advocate and um, to uh, promote independent living in Cambodia. Our challenge is that the budget allocations from the government and the, uh, the corporations from the higher government is still limited. As you know, Cambodia is a developing country, so now we don't have any personal assistance systems in, um, uh, in the national uh, level, so we use like 
to make the model of the PA personal assistant. And the challenge is the PA movement, personal assistant movement, is resign and be recruit. Less corporations of the family of people with disability in accessibility modification. And with this regard to the budget, target commune as PPCL as a, uh, the main sponsors. This is still challenging because they think that the, our organization is one of uh, organizations who have like a big money to support them to, uh, to build like accessible RAM or accessibility or something like this. Our way forward, and we will uh, work in partnership with HIL, uh, the government, and continue implementing the similar project as we uh, establish the role model team of people with disability and to um, promote the effective uh, advocacies in order to promote accessibility and provide personal assistance to the person with severe disability in community. Thank you very much for your time and paying attention. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you. Semes. And I'm very glad that you made it. Welcome. Welcome, Nawaf. is from the Forum of the Handicapped from Lebanon. Uh, Nawaf will share with us their holistic approach in terms of giving services for independent living and inclusion. Okay, welcome. Thank you, Najdat. And sorry for being late due to a broken wheelchair. So I'm, I'm here now. Well, let me tell you about the um, Forum of the Handicap. Sorry for the name, we're going to change it now. But uh, the whole idea started when we decided to work in the Lebanese city of Tripoli, a city uh, never dealt with disability and always had the paradigm, dominant paradigm of charity and institutionalization. So when we decided to work there, being part of the city, we decided this is not the way of life we would like to live, and therefore uh, it's time to introduce change in the community. So we developed the center with the idea of providing services that make persons with ability uh, capable of living as independent as possible. The idea started to think about it from the beginning. Let's start from home. At home, we need to introduce alteration to make sure that the place is accessible. So we developed a system, a program, directed toward this end. Then we said the second step. Once you are satisfied at home, you have to go out. Where are you going to go? So you're going to go, for example, to school, or you're going to go to work. Then you need a transportation system. So we developed develop accessible transportation system with the objective now, of, would you like to use the presentation as well? There's the tool next to you. Yes. Uh, this is I have to use? Yes. <laughs> Which one is this? I was wondering why I'm not yeah. sure. I know it's, it's fine. So this is the center. This is it's located in the land donated to us by the municipality over there. We built it in 1994. We were, we were founded in 1986. And uh, this is how we started. Now, this is the accessible transport. Uh, we, had, uh, we are the only one not only in the city, almost in Lebanon, where we have accessible transport for persons with disabilities. So we said, fine. Now we have accessible transport. Let's see what they want to do uh, with their transport. So we decided to do a project called Integration of Children with Disability in Standard School. And we started to promote, uh, to develop a system to make them possible for them to join a standard school and uh, through uh, providing them with after school support system and inside school resource center. And this is how it works. At your right, you see the home alterations that we've been introducing, and this is one of the car we're using. Some else, somebody else would like to go to work. So we developed a, some job creation scheme with the objective of lobbying to get a job for the person. Now, the lady in the middle, her name is Rasha Sengari. She's a polio victim, but now she's a member of the municipality of the city. She was elected uh, last uh, two years ago, and uh, she represents the forum in the municipality. That gives you an idea how much change, how much positive change we were able to introduce after 30 years of work. To your left, you see the marathon. We've been very active in the marathon, and uh, uh, our people are uh, winners of number one and number two uh, marathon cases. 
Now, uh, of course, let me say, what, how, why did we succeed? Uh, even though you have an environment that is not that positive about it, because the environment is more uh, within the charity and institutionalization paradigm. First, there was a civil war in Lebanon in 1975-1990. That was the time when FOH was founded. And at the time of war, lots of INGOs come and work in Lebanon. So they provide two things. They provide the, the new ideas, and they do provide funds. That help us to go further. Second, the people who started the project uh, are people who uh, are a BA graduate and above. So they have a higher level of education, and, and they were very well established in the society. Third, uh, there was good connection with the International Disability Organization that gave us support and power and understanding how to do the job. Of course, also, we were able to give positive lobbying with government and political officials that helped us also to move forward. And finally, society, because of the war, was sensitive and agreed with us that we are right that uh, our place is in society and not in institutions. Now, uh, of course, how to finance ourselves? Well, now the budget is around one and a half million dollars. Uh, we started with a budget of $10,000. The budget was given through a dinner, fundraising dinner. We got $10,000. This is how we started. And now we're running with one million and a half million dollars. Basically, it's a combination of contract with the Ministry of Social Affairs, Ministry of Health, a different project with different NGOs, and our productive projects, that are not to mention the local donation from the community. Now, uh, what, is our, what are we aiming now? Now we are aiming, we consider FOH as a model. A model of, because we cannot talk about deinstitutionalization without having independent living centers. That's why what we're aiming at is to promote the idea of FOH as a model all over Lebanon and to network with other international uh, independent living centers worldwide to give strength to the idea, to give strength to the concept, and to push the state to finance such kind of in initiative that are a prerequisite for any, uh, for any integration possible. And before thank you, there is a film. Is there a film? Did they pass a film or not? Is there, there was a video. I don't know if... If there is no video, I'm sure there is a video. Let's see. If it's one, it's going to be displayed. Any video? Later. 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 Then, all right. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you for to all of you. It's been great experiences you have shared with us. I think we have some some time, ten minutes for summary and some questions maybe. So we started with Al Hassan Foundation, and I wanna. Uh, give the word to them. I, would I was thinking when you started with this picture, your son there, really, it's, it's such a story starting uh, sad. Uh, you think it's something bad happened, and it happened, of course. And then all the great stories, success stories, you are building the good stories. So then we start seeing a lot of good things around. So what would you say from the start to now? Um, maybe this is a bit um, a personal mixed with the professional about the foundation, but um, uh, let me say that, um, okay. Uh, at times when we see things um, See, see them like very, very bad. Uh, we, come, we come later on to discover that we are blessed as a family. We, we were given a gift. And when I discuss this with my family members, either my daughter or my son, I tell them we were chosen for this. I mean, there is a price we had to pay. Maybe the price was uh, Al-Hassan's uh, legs. 
but for this price, we, we are doing a lot. I mean, I don't want to go um, more into something emotional, but, but we are literally changing the lives of people, of wheelchair users in Egypt. We are definitely doing this. And since we are talking now uh, in, this, um, in this session about uh, uh, independent living, um, if we can share more pictures, and I would tell you how people come to us, when, when people come to us with the impression that they are going to get supported from us, and then I meet them face to face, and the first thing I ask them, I tell them, what are you going to offer to the foundation? So they look at me, and we are, we are emotional. I mean, in Egypt, we are very emotional. So they look at me and they, they, just, they just don't understand my question. Because they got used that they have to be supported all the time. They have to be helped all the time. So when I come and tell them, what are you going to offer to us? It's like a question maybe they, they, were, they will never ask before. So they come and tell me, how come? How come you are asking us this question? I'm sick. You cannot see the wheelchair? I need help. I need support. I tell him, okay, maybe I'm crazy, but stay with me and be patient with me for six months. Follow what I would like to do maybe teach you or, or open a gate of light to you. And we start by um, inspiring them with others. At the very beginning, I don't, want to, uh, I don't want to talk a lot, but at the very beginning, I was hiring able buddies in the foundation. And uh, honestly, I had to kick them out. It's, it, it was not on their skin. They were coming for a job. They were coming for a nine to five job. And I found out that no, it's not going to work that way. So we have changed our mentality in the board of trustees. And we've decided that we are going to mostly hire humans with challenges. Because there is common understanding and they know the challenges and they are the front picture, I mean engineer Ale, when he now speaks to one of the people, when, when the foundation members see that Engineer Ale is here in the United Nations premises and giving a speech about Egypt, they get inspired. They see that they can do something. And this is how we are, we are, you are not weak, we tell them you are not weak, but we need to change the mindset. We need to change the stereotype of no, I can't, to yes, I can. And this is, by the way, extremely, extremely difficult in Arab countries because we were born and brought up on a media that promotes for the easy solution of people staying at home because we cannot afford financially either transportation, either accessibility, either anything. So the easy and cheap solution is for them to stay at home and do not show up. The expensive solutions is for them to come out and ask for rights and uh, do whatever they are requested to be done. I don't want to... Yeah, thank you, May. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for listening. <laughs> yeah, I want to raise a question to Carola. Uh, your time. So you've been mentioning to a, you, we all looked through your presentation to a different aspect, families. You said overprotection in families. Parents are uh, very concerned, and the room is, I'm sure, full of parents now. So, would you like to give us your message as parents in this room who has listened to you? Bueno, mi para todos los padres de familia que dejen de sobre proteger a sus hijos 
porque entre más sobre protección yo no tengo, nos dejan con menos, con menos autoestima y con menos poder de, de, de con menos poder para que nosotros mismos podamos podamos como personas con discapacidad llevar una vida como la de cualquier o, o, otra persona. Mi mensaje viene siendo de que los padres, de la familia, incluyendo a, to, a, todas, a todas las personas, de que no nos miren, no nos miren como diferentes. Somos, somos capaces, somos iguales. Lo único es que, es que por tener discapacidad se nos estereotipa. Y en pleno siglo XXI aún continu continuamos con, 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 con discriminación. Pero, ¿por qué? ¿Por qué? Porque dentro de la misma familia, cuando nacemos, lo primero que dicen, que dicen Viene siendo, pobrecito, nació con discapacidad. Desde ese momento nos están estereotipando. Entonces, mi reflexión viene, viene siendo de que todos, todos pensemos que, to, que, to, que todos somos somos diferentes, pero con la misma igualdad, uh -huh. con el mismo derecho. Ok. You have, you have been able to read what Carola said on, on there, so I will complement the, the translation. Uh, she said that... Um, You have to don't overprotect their child. This is a message for parents or for family. Uh, otherwise, it's very difficult for them to realize and um, to be empowered of what they, they can be. They need for families to treat them like anyone else and don't look at, look, look, look at uh, us the different way. We are equal and don't use the stereotypes. It's the 20, 21st century, so discrimination is something that is, shouldn't be longer be available. But however, when we are born, the first thing that family said is, poor child, it, it has a disability. So the, her message is, give us the chance to be equal and to be and to feel our rights. Thank you. So the last words, uh, Semis, uh, would you like to add anything? I've seen you would like to promote the pass. Good luck with the promotion. And your background is great in terms of self-advocacy. Maybe you can say a few words about it. Yeah, thank you, thank you very much. I just uh, want to share with all of you that maybe, yeah, you think that uh, in the developing country it's very hard to adapt and to um, make awareness of uh, the concepts of independent living because um, maybe lack of understandings or lack of the budget 
but what I'm thinking is just uh, starting from me. And um, if I don't start today, and when should I start? I never think that it's impossible anyway. So I always think when I start, it's something will possible. So I can, I can, I can change my sociality anyway. Thank you very much. Another thing they want to add, you know, yeah, yeah, the participation of people with disability is very important to change the world, to change the society. Thank you very much. Thank you. So finally, Nawal, uh, Nawal, um, with your presentation, actually, the last part, the expansion, international expansion, your dream, you have lots of attendance here. Would you like to make a call if you need any help? Well, I'll, uh, yesterday I met with Frank. Frank represents, uh, he's an advocacy officer in NNL. NNL is European Network of Independent Living. And I was talking to him about uh, how to enlarge the network to become international so our, everybody will be involved. So my message is, um, we should work together to make sure, you know, there are two things. There are DPOs who work for advocacy, for change, for lobbying, that's something. Another issue is for independent living to strengthen themselves, empower themselves, to be able to uh, impose this model on government on the expense of institutionalization. There is no integration or inclusion without independent living centers. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you for listening. I think, do we have time for questions or are we, we're done or? Maybe if anybody has questions after yeah. the session, we are, we are available. <laughs> there is one question, maybe we close the session with one question, all right? Uh, thank you very much for this amazing uh, presentation. I have one question for Alana D and May Zeynaldin, maybe. Uh, you perfectly explained how you'd work to change the mindset of people with disabilities on self-confidence and independence, but how do you work with the rest of the society? Because it's the biggest problem we face in Turkey, actually. Yes. Thank you. May, may I answer? Ale uh, 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 will, uh, will, will answer and I'll elaborate. When it comes to social awareness, we are working on parallel paths. We are working on Wheeler themselves to change the mentality for them that you can, you are differently able, and we are working on different on other society, how people look to us. Because in Arab countries, especially in Egypt, in Egypt, people are looking to us as a burden, homeless, doing nothing, and you should stay at home. And to change this image, it's not easy. You cannot talk, and this image is changed. You have to do something different. Because people grow up on the media on this way. So we are getting this bad picture, bad image, and put another one. How could we put another one? Through our members. We keep telling them, you have to be in streets, in malls, university, schools. People should see different image to change the mentality. This is a very short and direct way and a not easy way. But people, if people if see uh, wheelchair users, people with disability are walking, studying, uh, driving, everywhere, this bad image will directly change it. And what are we doing as Al Hassan Foundation? Every two months, we have a gathering for the newcomers, the new members. We do this gathering in a public areas, in a restaurants, in a space, for people to see us. People wake up every day morning and see a gathering of 100 wheelchair users. And people come and ask, what are you doing here? And see people who are wearing good, who are looking good. This is the way we are changing the mentality in Egypt. Um, let, me, let me add to this. Uh, the most difficult thing is changing mentalities. I mean, in my personal opinion, money comes. 
whatever uh, technical things, all this comes. But the mindset is the key because you can give somebody something, but you, you don't really believe that. You just give it out of charity or out of a good heart or out of whatever. So changing the mindset, especially in developing countries, is, is not easy. So maybe if we can give a recipe, uh, Ale said one of them, that people should go out. This is one thing. Another thing is media, media, media. We cannot always have movies of uh, people uh, very poor or begging or old uh, elderly people who cannot know. We need to see successful examples. We need to see uh, people who are playing sports. We need to uh, see uh, movie stars. We need to see uh, people who are doing so many different things. This comes to the other solution where also we take part of it as Al Hassan Foundation. We go to corporates yeah. and we just tell them, they, t they come and tell us, okay, we want to hire uh, people uh, with challenges. So usually what we say, ah, oh, please, uh, can you hire? Okay. Uh, uh, and they, say, they tell you, okay, but let them stay at home. You know, when somebody from, uh, when, when a big boss come and tells me, I want to hire people with challenges, I tell him, I don't go weak. I don't like, okay, please, you are going to do us a favor. I don't do this. I tell him, what are you going to offer him? I tell him, do you have accessible bathrooms? Do you have accessible transportation? Is your staff trained to have a direct boss who is maybe visually challenged or, uh, or have impairment or whatever? I ask those questions so I don't stand in the weak position, yes. okay? I, I talk head to head. We should talk out of strength and out of confidence that, that we have rights and at the same time, we have something to deliver. Yes. It's, it's, uh, it's not one way, it's yes. both ways. So we, we just, should- We so just need people to see us as we are. We are not superheroes, but at the same time, we are not burdened. Yes, we, we are, should we stop like, acting, yes. we should stop acting weak, but uh, also it's not about getting the emotional part of people and that's it. No, it has to be also, through uh, rights and through, I don't mean power as, as being emotionless, but it's not always right that when I have a, a challenge that I put my head down and seek uh, help that people will be like giving me something out of charity. It's a mindset. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you all.